other parts that we will be going over next will be the outboard head amp. The outboard head amp sits in the rack system, which is an option, but it allows you to uh, have everything on one shelf up here and just one more shelf for the outboard power supply. The outboard head amp features large blue glowing VU meters that say United Home Audio on them with black bezels. The, uh, they are also changeable. For example, you can turn the VU meters off, the lights off, you can turn the VU meter operation off. Why would you want to do that? Well, it's pretty simple. If you have VU meters constantly variables, varying their signal across the output, that may not be completely desirable. So you can turn it off, bypass the VU meters completely, and have a, a, a more straight signal path to the output. In addition to that feature, this also features a thick uh, billet aluminum chassis. These chassis are made specifically for United Home Audio. They are thick, they are heavy, and they do a great job at dampening everything inside the box. We don't just leave it there at a thick billet aluminum chassis. The entire inside of this box has a thick layer of rich light material. Rich light is very inert material, um, sometimes even used for countertops, food surface tops. Uh, it's a dense product made of a zillion layers of paper and uh, some kind of a epoxy resin with it. It's a very heavy stuff. It's, very, it's fairly expensive. It's very expensive to ship because of the way it arrives in big sheets, very heavy and thick. But it does a great job at dampening everything that's attached to it. So we have all of the boards, all of the power delivery boards, which sit on the side of each, uh, on the right and the left side of the outboard head amp. And what happens is it gives a great inert surface to attach boards to, um, to attach capacitors, to attach anything that you want. It does a great job at dampening inside the box. In addition to that, the entry points, the input and the output, have a separate plate decoupled from the chassis. That plate sits on a material called FO.Q. It's a product from Japan and what it does is it dampens the plate and isolates it from the chassis. So what happens is you have a very, very inert and a very uh, dampened place to connect your high-end cables to. Coming into this unit, we have a right and a left XLR that comes from the tape transport to the outboard head amp. We supply the XLR cable between the uh, tape transport and the head amp. It's a very nice cable. It is uh, appropriately sized for the output, which is very small, very, uh, very small output from the tape head. So the wire is appropriately gauged for that. Also, um, we are using Furtec XLRs, the carbon fiber uh, top of the line XLR connectors. So it's a, it's a very nice cable. You can experiment with other cables. But the cable that I'm supplying with this should be your benchmark, should give you a good idea of is this other cable sounding better or not, because chances are it may not. What you want to avoid when you're cabling from the tape transport to the outboard head amp is using too thick or uh, too high, a uh, uh, too low rather, a gauge wire because the more wire between the tape head and the input provides more resistance. So you would want to make sure you watch out for that. I have used thick cables. In my opinion they don't sound nearly as good as this cable. I've tried a number of them and uh, 
just bear in mind that more like what you're trying to do between the tape transport and the outboard head amp is more like a phono cable and not a, a, a signal XLR signal cable. So I would focus on that. If there's a specific kind of cable that you use within the rest of your system and you really want to try that, have that manufacturer make you a tone arm cable, XLR, standard XLR configuration to XLR. Try that cable. I think you'll get a better result. Okay. Inside this unit, we have huge gain stages. We had to redesign all of the boards because of that. They're fully discrete, pure class A, fully differentially output, uh, output from it. It is also a completely dual mono design. In other words, one channel, another channel. And in the outboard power supply, we also have three toroidal power transformers. One just runs the tape transport, one runs the right channel, one runs the left channel, complete separation of church and state 100%. Inside this unit, we also have, as I said, redesigned all of the boards. We've gone to a new board material that's certified for use in space. Reason being that um, the typical fiberglass boards, FR4 boards, over time have a tendency to allow higher frequencies to permeate through the board, causing a smearing effect. Well, I didn't want that. <laughs> so. Not only do we use hyper-pure, thick copper uh, boards, but there's also a gold sandwich above and below the board, real gold. Nothing is going to get through that. In addition to that, the dielectric that's used on these boards is a ceramic composite. It's not fiberglass. It's a ceramic composite. It's a very inert. It's good to any temperature you want to run it at. And in addition to that, it does not allow any frequency to permeate that board whatsoever. And uh, they sound great to boot. So we had those custom designed uh, for us. Every single board inside the uh, outboard head amp and in, uh, also inside the outboard power supply are all these same boards. I don't care what it is, even a capacitor board same material throughout. Now, capacitors. Let's talk for a second about capacitors because the thing that we tried a number of different capacitors in here and really some, some things sounded very good, some things didn't sound good at all. Um, we tried a number of different things. However, upon looking at all of these capacitors, we found that there were compromises that were made in them and we wanted to make a capacitor with no compromises. For example, we didn't want tin sprayed on the end caps. We didn't want that. We didn't want a cheap dielectric. Uh, we wanted a great dielectric. We wanted a hyper pure copper foil inside the capacitor. And so we tried to get a number of different capacitor companies to work with us and make uh, these capacitors to our specifications, but nobody uh, e even wanted to talk about spraying molten copper. So lo and behold, Wilson Audio, the speaker manufacturer, bought rail caps. So we talked to them and they said, yeah, we'll give it a shot. And through a considerable time of R&D and trial and error, they finally perfected the process and they worked great. Not only do they have a hyper-pure copper foil in them, but they use a real DuPont Teflon, the real high-priced stuff, and gold leads, so not, not aluminum or tin leads, or even copper leads, but gold. And in addition to that, they figured out how to spray molten copper on the end caps instead of molten tin. And I think the combination of all of these different things really resulted in a super high quality capacitor. And in fact, uh, the guys at Rail Caps basically just called them super caps because they were going in the super deck and they were uh, super configuration, super materials, super design, and impl implementation. 
So they called them the Super Cap. In fact, on all of the caps, it'll say United Home Audio Super Cap. And we actually copyrighted the Super Cap name, and we are the only ones that can buy and sell the Super Caps. So this unit has an umbilical cord coming from the uh, outboard power supply. There's an umbilical going to the tape transport. There's an umbilical also going to the outboard head amp. We supply both umbilicals and they're made uh, using Nutric Gold connectors as well as high quality uh, copper wire inside. The unit itself is uh, about 65 pounds. It uh, has heat sinks on the top. It has an interesting Celtic relief on the side. It has a brushed finish silver faceplate with the UHA uh, logo on it. And uh, I think that you'll find it to be a very satisfying piece of equipment. And next, we'll go into the outboard power supply. Thanks for watching.